Hey everybody, this is Derek with Cleaning Business Today and want to talk to you about a three-part series that we're starting with this uh, quick video which is all about weather-related and cold-related issues because it's winter up here in uh, Ohio and for those of you below the Mason-Dixon line, this may not be as relevant, although somebody who grew up in Texas, I can tell you we did occasionally get snowstorms down there too. Um, but it's how to deal with our winter weather. So we're going to break it into three series and today I'm going to talk about scheduling, the effect on scheduling, and having your policies in place. So one of the trickiest questions for most cleaning service owners is just deciding when to stay open and when to stay closed. And honestly, it's going to vary a lot by regions. As somebody who's lived in different parts of the United States, I can tell you that Cincinnati, Ohio is surprisingly gun shy when it comes to snow compared to other places like Minneapolis and Chicago. So the policy which we had uh, standardized on and I find most cleaning services use is deferring to the school districts. That If the school districts start late, the cleaning service starts late. If the school district cancels, then they will cancel for the day for those employees. And there's a couple reasons why this works. First of all is the reality is most of our employees probably have uh, kids and if the school cancels suddenly, they're not going to have anywhere to put their kids. So they're not coming to work anyway. Secondly, the school districts normally employ uh, weather, uh, weathermen or weather people uh, to figure out the weather. They also have lawyers to figure out the liability of driving in the snow. So if they've decided that it's not safe and they don't want the liability of the kids going to school, I probably don't want the liability of my employees on the road. So our policy was always to match the school district. Now this can get tricky for a couple reasons because not all school districts are the same. For example, here in Cincinnati, Ohio, a lot of my customers live in Blue Ash, which is a relatively dense, affluent part of town. They've got great snow removal capabilities in Blue Ash. It can snow two inches. They'll have it plowed. It won't even look like it snowed on the street by nine in the morning. A lot of my employees come from more rural parts of town where there's not even a municipality they're counting on the state to plow. And let me tell you, the state doesn't plow the side roads very quickly. So snow out in some of those more rural areas would cancel school for them, but not for us in the city. So we would have to communicate to our customers ahead of time that when we talk about canceling on snow days, we are matching the snow days of where my cleaners live, not the snow days where my customers live. And that means when it snowed, sometimes I would have seven of 25 employees come into work that day and have to reschedule certain sections. So like most things, it was important to communicate with the customers up front this time of year before the snow happens, what your policy is going to be. The other thing which we did, which was important to communicate to both the cleaners and to the customers, is when a snow day happens, we would have a makeup day, just like uh, schools would. Um, so when it snowed, if we have lost Tuesday, our cleaners would work on Friday to make up for that day. And so it was explained to them in the policy that when there's a snow day, you are going to be working on Saturday to make up for the snow day. And we also explained that to our customers so that when we were calling and needing to cancel due to snow, we could reschedule them on Saturday and everyone knows what was going on. So there's a couple key decisions here. You don't have to match the policy that myself and a lot of others did about um, matching uh, what the schools did. Um, some states use snow emergency levels, one, two, three. You could decide to use the snow emergency level system. Um, you could set a guideline that a certain amount of snow or ice and you cancel. The important thing is that you have a guideline, that you communicate it to your employees and your customers now. So when it happens, people aren't calling in and wondering. They'll know, oh, they're not going to come today. School was canceled. Got it. And also have the discussion now about how you're going to reschedule that work. Um, are you going to work on Saturday to make it up? Hey, that may not work for everybody. That was our policy. Are you going to stay out the next couple of days a little late? Are you just going to skip the house? Um, I will tell you that skipping the house typically didn't work very well for us because when it snows, their kids stay home from sc school too. They go out and play in the snow and then come inside with that wet, muddy snow boot slush and get it all over the house. So the customers, in my experience, got kind of grumpy if we weren't going to come and clean when it snowed because their house got really dirty when it snowed. So having a strategy for setting them up for future appointments and rescheduling is really important. Uh, we're going to be talking a couple more things in the next couple weeks. Next week, we're going to be talking about the fun of snow safety, um, shoveling driveways, slips and falls, injuries, 
all that great stuff that happens in the snow that probably uh, runs up your cost. And then the third one, which is going to be two weeks from now, I'm going to be turning it around and trying to make it a little more positive. When it snows and it's cold, what are the opportunities to generate some more revenue to make up for all of this nastiness we're talking about? So this will be our three-part uh, series on snow, and hopefully this helped. Thanks. And as always, follow us at Ask Cleaning Business today. If you're not subscribed, click on the right-hand side of the screen to subscribe to get our newsletters. Thanks.